My name is Eric Peterson. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based in Montana. The only thing that matches my passion for storytelling is my love for upland hunting. So we've combined these two pursuits to bring you Tailgate Tales, a series of upland hunting stories that focuses on the confluence of creativity in the outdoors. Each episode features a new creative guest, from a tattoo artist to an author. They share their craft and how hunting in the outdoors influences what they do. We've got bird dogs, beautiful scenery, and plenty of action. So join us for Tailgate Tales. In this episode, I'll be hunting with Amber Blazina. Amber is a contemporary Western oil painter who specializes in impressionist and expressionist methods. She melds her vast experience in design, the knowledge of painters who she has studied under, and the experiences of her rural Eastern Montana upbringing to create bold, energetic paintings. I had the pleasure of joining Amber, her husband Tim, and their sweet wire-haired pointing griffon Hazel on the ranch that Amber grew up on. It was a blustery day on the Eastern Montana prairie, so grab your stormy cromer and an extra layer and join us for a memorable hunt. I'm an oil painter here in Belgrade, Montana. How do you describe your style of painting? I would describe it as a mix between abstract expressionism and impressionism. How did you get started painting? I mean, I always painted throughout my life. So probably six years ago, I was just completely fed up with graphic design. And so I just decided like, I'm 36, I have nothing to lose at this point. So I started watching uh, videos online and practicing and practicing and practicing. And I'm still practicing, but wow. <laughs> yeah. So you're sort of self-taught. Kind of, yeah. I mean, you know, I've, I've taken workshops. I've studied with an impressionist. I've learned from other people, but it's all been self-led. Like I've gotten to pick my teachers, which I think is a very valuable thing. What inspires your work? I love movement. And animals, sometimes too when they stop, but there's like that last gesture of movement mm -hmm. that I love to catch. Um, and it's usually, they're usually not looking at you mm -hmm. in the paintings. It's usually just this uh, moment caught in time where they're just at the end of a movement or it's between instincts I like to think of it. Hmm. Can you talk about uh, where and how you grew up? I grew up in the middle of nowhere is what I like to tell people um, between Lindsay and Circle. It's my favorite meme is the it's the map of the United States and it's, it's the little dot by Circle Montana and it's the furthest place away from a Starbucks. Really? Yes. <laughs> Circle Montana. Circle Montana. Wow. Yeah. We were always a couple years behind. I mean, we watched MTV, so music-wise, we were on it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> fashion-wise, I was really behind. Uh, because you're living on the farm and it's not like you wore nice clothes. Even to school, we had a two-room school. Yeah, it was more of a an alone existence. I don't like to say lonely because I never felt lonely. Mm. Um, but you know, you can go out at night and play with your friends because they're 10 miles away. On to hunting. Did your family hunt? Did you hunt as a child? How did that start? No. My dad, my dad had two little girls and worked all the time. I didn't even shoot a gun until I was probably 19 and I had been dating Tim because uh, he's really, he loves hunting. His family is big into hunting and I love to watch the dog work. And I actually you know, never shot a bird or shot at a bird until we had Hazel. So it was so much fun to watch her work. Yeah. And she's my dog. She's just the most joyful dog I've ever known. Well, let's Sounds go hunting. Good. Yeah, no kidding.
For someone who's never seen this landscape, how would you describe it? Oof. It's rough. It's harsh. It produces a different type of person. Um, someone that has to be very resilient. And I think that's part of the beauty too. It's the sky that does it for me out here too. I mean, it's truly the big sky. That's why Montana is named the Big Sky State. Being out here helped me look at composition and learn composition in different ways. You have to find the beauty out here. As an artist, what goes through your mind as you're out wandering the landscape <laughs> Too looking for fun? much, <laughs> as you guys can tell. Uh, I forget that I'm hunting and I'm, I'm looking at colors, I'm constantly composing paintings in my head. There's a lot of stuff going on in my brain as I'm walking around. I, I have, um, I guess you could call it focused ADHD, I suppose, because it's all always about um, painting, hmm. not so much about what I'm actually doing in the moment, so. So when a rooster gets up, are you thinking, oh, there's a rooster I need to shoot, or oh, there's a splash of color in this landscape? Yeah, that pretty <laughs> much that. They always take me by surprise, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'm here to try to kill a rooster and to hunt, not to like get lost in my thoughts. But I think that's also, I'm alone all day long, so I do get lost in my thoughts. It's, Part of the creative process so yeah i have to like almost switch on a different part of my brain to be present Well, it was a really enjoyable experience to come see this place. Um, I'm, I'm in your camp. I think the eastern part of the state has its own magic. Mm -hmm. Not just because there's more roosters here either, although that certainly doesn't hurt <laughs> that anything. That does help, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank yeah. you for sharing this place and Absolutely. having us out. Absolutely, thanks for coming out. Yeah. Would, yeah, hopefully we can do it again next year. Yeah. yeah.